A new book about Michael Jordan's life is set to be released soon. It's called Michael Jordan, The Life, and it's written by Ronald Lazenby. And he actually touches on the issue of racism in the book, but in a really surprising way. He talks about how Michael Jordan considered himself racist when he was younger because he experienced such hostility from the white community in his town um, in uh, South Carolina. North Carolina. So, oh, North Carolina, I apologize. So um, here's what Ronald Lazenby said uh, during an interview with Sports Illustrated. He said, as I started looking at newspapers back in this era when I was putting together Dawson Jordan's, that's Michael Jordan's great-grandfather, uh, life. The Klan, referring to the KKK obviously, was like a chamber of commerce. It bought the uniforms for ball teams. It put Bibles in all the schools. And he also discussed how, you know, if it wasn't for the violence that they kept pushing, they probably would be the chamber of commerce in that area. So then Michael Jordan, of course, is interviewed for this book, and he talks about how he felt like he was racist because he was attacked by white people in the community he grew up in. So in 1977, he got suspended from school because one of the white students, a girl, uh, called him the N-word, and he responded by throwing a soda at her. And so he was suspended, and that was one instance. And then there was also the instance of him starting off his sports career by playing baseball. He was doing baseball, and he was constantly berated by the, the coaches, by parents there, and he felt terrible about it. And it was his way of kind of protecting himself against the attacks that he he was dealing with. So that's really interesting because two things come out of that. One, that finally begins to explain why he went and did that crazy thing where he tried to switch sports and play baseball in the middle of his career. Now I know he's super competitive and he wanted to prove that he could do both sports, but this might also partly explain it that they were like, oh, well, baseball's for white people, not for you. So if he had that chip on his shoulder the whole time, that's why he might have stopped in the middle of an incredibly perhaps the most successful basketball career of all time mm -hmm. to go and try to do baseball. And so it's an interesting concept as to whether Michael Jordan's quote unquote racism in the beginning was justified or not. Because why would you be racist against all white people unless you felt discriminated against in your experience by all of them, which is of course not the case, right? Mm -hmm. But that he felt that way and that's why he struck back by thinking, well I'm against all of you. Yeah. Isn't that interesting that that's the, the context that he grew up in not that long ago in North yeah. Carolina where he thought all white people are out to get me, right, yeah. and get all black people. So that gives you a real insight into how it was. And now that doesn't necessarily make his assumptions c correct, obviously. Even he thinks later, obviously they were incorrect, mm -hmm. and I shouldn't have thought that way. But he was a kid at the time. Yeah, he was a kid at the time, and I could totally see myself reacting in the same way if I was a victim of any type of abuse, uh, whether it's verbal or physical abuse from any group of people. Let's take race out of it. You know, let's just say um, a group of boys harass me or something like that, or a specific mm. group of girls harass me. I'm going to have hatred toward them because I feel like I'm being attacked by them. So I think it's an understandable feeling, or under it's understanding that he had that feeling. But what I think is big of him is that he grew up and he didn't allow that to control his life because I think it's really difficult to go through that kind of treatment and then at some point finally grow to the point where you realize no this is wrong I shouldn't hate all people in this group because it's not symbolic of who all of them are I find a little bit of I find problem with the t using the term racist for him at least it was hate it was hatred which I think is a little different. Racism based completely in nothing except the fact that you look at this group of people and you think that they're lesser than you because of who they are. This guy, in growing up, hated white people who did horrible things to him and the people around him who looked like him. So really racism breeds hate is what it bred rather than it breeding more racism. He wasn't in the position of power, he wasn't in the position of doing anything to them or really controlling a group of them. It was hatred for them because of what he'd experienced. And it's bad because it's hatred and really it destroys yourself. So it, I, I, I just think it's a little different. It's hatred, which is horrible, but it wasn't racism. Yeah, you know, I know a lot of people object to that idea that, uh, you know, since he was not in a power position, he couldn't possibly be racist. But, but what Jared, I, I think, is saying is, look, it, he was not in a position to keep them down, and, and racism implies to some degree that that as JR pointed out, you feel that they're lower than you. Mm -hmm. And I bet even if you asked a young Michael Jordan at the time, do you think that white people are inferior to you? He would be like, no, I just hate them because they treat me that way. Right, right. That's and, true. And, and saying that somebody is filled with hate isn't any better, right? I mean, it's, that's not a pleasant word, uh, but to me, you know, obviously his reaction to it isn't quote, quote unquote correct, and it's easy for us to say because we didn't live in that environment. Right? But to me, the more interesting thing is the environment itself. Mm -hmm. 
that, that a young black kid in North Carolina growing up at a similar time that I was growing up, he's a little older than I am, but not that much older, right? Um, experienced so much racism that he thought all white people were like that. So for those of you who might think like, oh, it's easy because he has these great skills and uh, you know athletic ability. He was constantly told that he was shit. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, and he didn't even start until what, like senior year in high school or something, Jr. Like he no. got cut his he, sophomore year of high school from the that's team, what it was. so he wasn't like the best his whole life. You know? Right. And and if you don't know the whole story of some of these athletes, including Michael Jordan, the guys who are the top of their profession are not the most necessarily the most skilled. They're the ones who work the hardest. And I'm not just saying that because it's a cliche. It's true. If you break it down, like Jerry Rice might be the best football player to ever play. Now, I know that's controversial because usually you think of quarterbacks or maybe you think of a linebacker on defense or something. But Jerry Rice dominated his position more than anybody has ever dominated their position. And he couldn't even beat the quarterback in a foot race. Every day, Steve Young and Jerry Rice would race be before practice. And every day, Steve Young would beat Jerry Rice. Mm -hmm. Okay, He wasn't even that fast. But no one worked out like Jerry Rice. He was a maniac in how many times he practiced, how he practiced, and others would go to his like his training camp in the summers to practice to become better football players. And Michael Jordan was similar. No <coughs> one shot more, no one practiced more, no one worked harder. And not only is he considered the best basketball player of all time, but now he owns one of the uh, NBA teams. So he's got to be wearing his chains around the house.